Even Detroit Lions fans get an offseason to emotionally recover from a losing record before doing it all over again. But for those of us who enjoy watching competitive games of skate, the barracks is already thrusting season 13 on us while we lick our wounds from last season. The good news is that, from what's been shared so far, it looks like the 13th installment of Battle of the Barracks is already off to a better start than the year-long season 12. Mainly because a submission process is underway on Instagram for the hashtag nextgen participants. Thankfully, Barra has clarified that Season 13 won't only be newcomers. All right, Barra, please put Jamie and Tyler back in Battle of the Barracks. Oh yeah, just so you know, this isn't for every name in Battle of the Barracks. This is just a few spots. So hopefully we can rest assured that at least some familiar faces will be willing to return for another tournament. At the time of this edit, the Barracks is in the process of narrowing down the next-gen submissions, with the most recent example shaving 16 weekly entries down to one. On a personal level, this next-gen approach seems fair enough, because the Barracks is inviting thirsty, unknown flatground skaters to participate, reviewing their submissions, and even considering live feedback from viewers in the selection process. Alright, guys. Judah or Nady? Let's hear it. Judah or Nady? What do we got on the vote? Nady. Nady makes it. But how many next-gen skaters will make up the Season 13 roster? 10%? 25%? 50%? In the off chance that the Barracks can consider my proposal, I believe something close to the Season 7 magic of pitting Joes versus Pros can be closely replicated, if not surpassed by considering ELO rankings of past participants, using a 50-50 mix of experienced skaters against the next-gen crop. As we all know by now, Season 7 was the first time the Barracks pitted unknown but highly skilled flatground skaters against the industry's veterans, and the end result found that a Joe named Cody Cepeda took out one of Brazil's most beloved plywood pushers, Luan Oliveira. In order to set up a bracket that will be exciting enough to crescendo to an enjoyable finals night, the NCAA March Madness selection method can be used for Battle at the Barracks 13. Since the next-gen skaters are still currently being selected while making this edit, those individuals' spots will be referred to as whatever their ultimate rank is, based on the elimination process. Whether this method will remain consistent is anyone's guess, but so far next-gen skaters are currently being whittled down to one, from batches of 16, and in my opinion, half of the 64 skater bracket should be these next-gen skaters, while the remaining 32 should come from experienced skaters who've had the highest historic ELOs in the tournament, which takes into account winning records, match difficulty and length, as well as margins of victory. Using this approach, the entire first round would be made up of one next-gen versus an experienced Battle at the Barracks competitor. If we replicate the March Madness method of seed placement, the Battle at the Barracks 13 bracket would be similarly formatted like Season 12, but the match selection will be different. Season 12 selection style guaranteed that the finals night would have one influencer, Icon, Pro, and Joe, but in hindsight this was a mess because most of the icons battles were goofs and the influencer battles apart from a couple of jamie's battles were yawn fests for the most part the genius of the season 7 pro versus joe format is that a certain type of equalizing pressure exists for both skaters to do well in their respective battle a pro doesn't want to get schooled by some no name without at least putting up a fight while the Hungry Joe could get that big break and achieve the impossible with an upset, so both parties have an incentive to at least try, if not go for the throat. The first four ranked round one battles would start with Seva Krutkov skating against the lowest, 32nd ranked next gen skater. Seva has the single highest ever ELO ranking of any Battle at the Barracks competitor, mainly thanks to his impressive ability to appear in finals night every season since winning the season 8 title. Krutkov skating against the lowest ranked next gen skater would pressure each skater to make sure not to slouch in this match. The second top ranked match would be Luan Oliveira versus the 31st ranked next gen skater. Luan won season 11, upsetting the previous season's champ at the time, Chris Joslin, and while Oliveira didn't make it to finals in season 12, he did get to round 4 before getting edged out by top ELO Seva. Chris Joslin vs Next Gen Skater number 30 would be the third of the top four round one matches. Joslin's season 12 performance wasn't as impressive as previous seasons, but Chris dominated season 10 and found himself in the championship match in season 11 to give him the third highest ELO ever. 
The fourth best round one match would be Tyler Peterson versus the 29th ranked best next gen skater. You're probably thinking this is bogus that Tyler's mentioned before Jamie Griffin, the latter of whom won season 12. But Peterson managed to upset Elo King Seva in the most recent tournament's finals night, giving him a relatively significant boost. The second tier of round one would start with PJ Ladd against the 28th ranked Next Gen. PJ is the only two time Battle of the Barracks champ, and his fifth all time ELO ranking reflects that. But unlike the previous four mentioned tournament stars, Ladd was absent from seasons 11 and 12, so expecting him to appear in season 13 could be a pipe dream. Shane O'Neill has the 6th best ELO, and would face the 28th ranked next gen. O'Neill's the number one battle at the barrack skater on paper that should be a former champ, but somehow doesn't have a title yet. And like PJ, his past season absence makes a season 13 appearance uncertain. Season 12 champ Jamie Griffin ranks 7th ELO all time, pitting him against the 27th ranked next gen skater. Jamie and Tyler were both rookies in Season 12, and while Griffin did ultimately beat Peterson in the championship match, his path to the last round was a smidge easier than his competitors. Jamie did have to beat Johnny Geiger in Round 1, and a formidable Spencer Barton in Round 2, but while Geiger's proven he's one of the best at flat ground, his battle at the barracks record is 0-2 now, and Barton is a fellow rookie to the tournament. After Johnny and Spencer, Jamie's path to the championship was increasingly easier compared to Tyler's, skunking Vinny and Lil Dre in rounds 3 and 4. Griffin's finals night battle against Chris Cole was surrounded in controversy due to the last minute switch up from P-Rod and Cole's own easy path through the 12th season. Cody Cepeda ranks 8th amongst all-time individual ELO top rankings and would start round 1 against the 26th best next-gen skater. Cody's the Michigan-based Joe that plowed through Season 7 like a freight train, winning the whole thing, but he's only been able to make it to the Season 8 finals night since his rookie debut, despite competing in every season afterwards except number 9. P-Rod kicks off the third tier of Round 1, coming in ninth for all-time highest personal ELO, and would face the 25th best next-gen skater. P-Rod's been around since Season 2, won Season 3, and has been in three championship battles. P-Rod has also been eliminated in Round 2 or earlier four times throughout his career, but technically speaking, he never got beat in Season 12, dropping out of finals night due to Rona, and he skated pretty well in his recent battles. Nick Holt has the 10th best ELO, finding himself against the 24th best next-gen skater, Holt beat two former champs in his first two rounds of Battle at the Barracks 7, the first of which was the biggest upset of the tournament's history, and huge contributor to his high ELO, but he also made it all the way to round 4 in Season 12. Season 4 champ Morgan Smith is number 11 ELO all time, and he would face the 24th best next-gen skater. It'd be awesome to see Morgan appear in another flat ground tournament, as his skills are no joke and he's personally one of my favorites overall. Mike Moe rounds out the third tier with the 12th highest ELO, facing the 22nd best next-gen skater. Mike Moe won the first ever battle at the barracks, and was always a serious title contender of each season in which he competed. Even in Season 11, after his injury, Mike Moe was looking at a legit finals night berth, but got too greedy with Rick Flip attempts against Tom Asta. Season 12 Mike Moe revealed a drastically less fine-tuned flat ground skater from the past, but if he's against someone who's actually competitive, the results could be surprising. Chris Cole, Diego Najera, Eric Costin, and Tori Pudwill make up the fourth tier of the first round. Cole and Najera are the only champs among the quartet, winning seasons 2 and 9 respectively. Costin's high elo is mainly attributed to stifling Nick Holt's unlikely progression in Season 7, with Eric beating the young buck in Round 3. Tori's most noteworthy achievement in Battle at the Barracks harkens back to Season 3, Round 3, when Pudwell defeated the Season 1 champ and undefeated at the time Mike Moe. Rodrigo TX, Davis Torgerson, Corey Kennedy, and Mickey Papa are the first round's fifth tier of the bracket. TX made waves in Season 4, Round 2 by beating the previous season champ, P-Rod. Torgerson's 18th highest ranking ELO also comes from Season 4, where he beat Mike Moe in the third place battle. Corey Kennedy's second round win against Kelly Hart in Season 3 found him with what is currently the 19th best personal ELO all time. 
Mickey Papa's impressive streak through season 9 before losing to Diego in the title battle finds him with the 20th highest all-time ELO. The 6th round 1 tier includes Deshaun Jordan, Moose, Aurelian Giroux, and Will Fiok facing their respective next-gen competitors. Deshaun not only got a major upset in season 12 over Cody Cepeda, but did it by skunking the poor guy, equating to an all-time ELO that ranks 21st. Moose's key moment that finds him 22nd overall just so happens to be from when he beat Chris Cole in Season 8 Round 1. Aurelian made it clear that his flat ground is different when he hard flip late flipped Joslyn in the second round of Season 12. Fiox upset over Morgan Smith in Season 10 Round 2 is what currently gives Will the 24th highest personal elo. Ishad Ware, Tom Asta, Nick Tucker, and Michael Summer are Tier 7 in Round 1 battles of the proposed Season 13 bracket. Ishad beat Morgan Smith in Season 5 Round 3 to make the cut, while Tom Asta overcame the odds against PJ Ladd in Season 8 Round 3. Nick Tucker's Round 2 win against Kelly Hart in Season 12 ranks him 27th amongst best personal ELOs, while Michael Summers' Season 9 Round 3 victory over Walker Ryan locks him in as the final competitor in Tier 7. The 8th and final tier of Round 1 is Benny Fairfax, Ronnie Krager, David Gonzalez, and Billy Marks, and they would end up facing the top 4 ranked next-gen skaters. I can see Billy Marks making another appearance in Battle at the Barracks, considering he was in Season 12, and maybe even Ronnie Krager, who skated not too long ago in the Fight Night series. Benny Fairfax hasn't been in Battle at the Barracks since getting runner-up in Season 1, so he's probably the biggest question mark of every skater on this list, as far as whether or not he'd actually show up if invited. And David's another international competitor that might not be able to make it if invited. In conclusion, I'm on board with the barracks going through a voter-based selection process of skaters submitting their flat ground, and selfishly hope they pick a clean cut of 32 next-gen skaters, rounding out the rest of the bracket with 32 Battle at the Barracks veterans for a robust 64 skater tournament. Placing these 32 highest ELO skaters with their corresponding next-gen skaters would be an interesting remake of the Pros vs. Joes model that made Battle at the Barracks an exciting viewing experience. If the Barracks can learn from their May in Season 12 mistake of announcing names before officially declaring their bracket, and strategically plan to hold the first four rounds in as tight of a time window as possible, say two weekends, they could slowly trickle out the battles over a two to three month period and host finals after that, before their fanbase checks out and toxifies their comments section. I'm not personally involved in anything related to the planning or hosting of the battles at the barracks, but I imagine the hardest part of hosting a 64 skater bracket, apart from getting all 64 skaters to accept an invitation and show up, would be getting the first rounds done, because there are 32 battles that need to occur before you can proceed to round 2. Season 12 confirms how hard the first round was, taking 8 months to get through while rounds 2 through 4 only took 4 months. The Season 11 Championship Battle livestream, with no cuts, at least that I noticed, is 17 and a half minutes long, which includes a trophy display, traditional reading of the rules, and post-match interview. At 92 turns, Jocelyn and Oliveira skated nearly twice as long in the Championship Battle, compared to an historical average match length of 54 turns. Conservatively speaking, you can safely assume that one battle takes 15 minutes start to finish. 32 round 1 battles at 15 minutes each is 8 hours, but that's assuming every battle will take as long as this Season 11 championship, so it's not ridiculous for the home of skateboarding to make a dream big goal of filming all round 1 battles at their warehouse in one day or at least a weekend. I can understand that getting 64 skaters from around the world to show up at the same place on the same day, ready to compete, is easier said than done. Add in having all the necessary referees and camera equipment ready, and working properly at the same time as the battles are in progress, you're looking at an ambitious endeavor. But it's not impossible with good communication and planning. Once the first 32 round 1 battles are out of the way, you're left with 32 unique skaters that need to compete in 16 round 2 battles, which at worst should only take 4 hours, or half as long as round 1. 
If everything's running smoothly and you start the competition early enough in the day, you could plow through the eight round three battles with 16 unique skaters in two hours or less, then polish off the four round four battles with the remaining eight unique skaters in an hour easy. By that point, your four finalists are set and those four finalists can study their opponents or whatever before the live finals night. In addition to the aforementioned proposed skaters and event hosting time frame, I do hope the barracks drops the Legion of Doom from any future battles, because at this point it's very obvious whoever skates against them will win, which cheapens the thrill of what could be a genuinely exciting competitive flat ground tournament. The one thing that I'm really good at is time. Time. Except for the time it's taken for Eric and I to buy Hypebeast out of our business. That's taken a long time. Uh, like, like way too long. Okay, uh, what do you guys want now? Just dropped a little bomb on you.